Hey guys, what's up? It's Eiflin here, and welcome to episode 6 of my Warframe The Ultimate Beginner's Guide 2.0. I know it's been a while since I've uploaded one of these videos, but we're back, and this video is going to be jam-packed with a bunch of stuff that you need to do before you can progress on to Jupiter, because we're going to be covering Phobos, and we're going to be covering Ceres in this video. So uh, put on your seatbelt and get ready to just digest a ton of information. You probably notice this little dog looking animal creature thing that I have lying here. You're not actually supposed to make this thing yet, but because like I'm like a step ahead of the game, I went ahead and uh, I created this little guy. Uh, this guy, if you see this little like spot on my neck, uh, he came from that. Um, you should have a quest in your codex called Howl of the Kubro. And basically, this is a quest that you have to do to get yourself a little pet dog, right? Now, you can do this quest the way you're meant to do it and get your little pet dog. Or you can go two in one and you can get your uh, little pet dog and a mutant pet dog if you get the mutant pet dog first. So this little zit that is on my neck, it's kind of but not really a spoiler. So we're going to use that and we're going to drain it into a egg that your dog would normally hatch from to make this little guy. So what I want you guys to do is follow along with the Howl of the Creeper quest. It's pretty self-explanatory. You're going to get to a point where you need to farm up a Kubro egg. You're going to farm up this Kubro egg, and then you're going to come to this little area over here. And then what's going to happen is it's going to allow you to incubate a Kubro, right? And as you have the zit on your neck, if you've got it on your neck, you get the zit on your neck by playing with other players who have been in contact with the Nidus Warframe. So nine times out of 10, you play like one public match, you're going to get this zit on your neck, right? So uh, get this zit on your neck and then keep it on your neck for an entire week. Wait until you can see that little tentacle coming out of it and then go to your incubator. Try to incubate your Kubro, but it's going to allow you to uh, drain the zit, and then it's going to give you this doggy right here. Now, the thing is, you can't use this dog because you have to complete the Howl of the Kubro quest to uh, get a, what's it called, a collar for him before you can use him. And you're only going to get that collar if you incubate a proper Kubro. Uh, just by incubating this dog, or this mutant dog, you're going to be a step ahead of the game and get the extra master rank from it. So realistically, it doesn't matter if you do it before or after the quest. I just thought that because I've already got this zit on my neck and players are probably going to want to get rid of that zit. Well, then, um, you know, we'll make this here dog first to begin with. And then they get the extra mastery and they also get to get rid of this zit, right? So, you know, just follow along that quest, get your little uh, mutant doggy here, and then get your normal doggy afterwards, which um, all you have to do, uh, if you get the mutant doggy, come up to your market and then type in uh, Pyre Core. Yep, so there you go, Incubator Pyre Core. You want to craft the blueprint for, or get the blueprint for this and then craft it. And then uh, you'll be able to incubate another dog because all you have to do after you incubate your mutant one is get another egg, which you get from the Kubro Dens on Earth. And then uh, get a Pyre Core as well, which of course you get from that market over there. So um, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to get rid of the Zit now. Usually uh, it would go away after you incubate the little dog. As far as I know, it used to do that. At least I think. I can't remember. But usually whenever you incubate a little dog, uh, the mutant dog, it would go away. But for some reason it didn't. So what happens is whenever it has the little tentacle coming out of it, you can come into this room. Now normally you can't come into this room, but you can come into this room. You can sit on this chair and then this thing is going to stab you in the neck. It's kind of gross and it's going to get rid of that zit. So I've been waiting to make this video for so long just to get rid of that zit. So uh, finally it's gone. There's really like, apart from getting that Kubro, there's nothing else that that zit does. So it doesn't matter if it's on your neck or not. Uh, you might want to have it on your neck for some weird reason. Uh, I just personally hate seeing it. So uh, basically all I have to do is go ahead and get myself another little fluffy Kubru, one that's a lot cuter than the, the one that I have, which he's running around my ship somewhere. There he is. He's facing the wall for some reason, but 
Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do that there after I make this video and then I'll have that prepared to show you guys in the next video. I'm going to be able to use it and get the mastery from it. But um, with all of that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, at the planets. So last time we left off, we were on Mars and we were completing the Phobos Junction so we can move on to Phobos. Now, Phobos is a relatively short planet because... There isn't a lot of things that you have to do on Phobos to unlock the Ceres Junction. So if we go ahead and we hover over the Ceres Junction, we have to defeat the Sergeant at Iliad on Phobos. Now, the Sergeant is basically a glorified corpus enemy. He is a corpus enemy that can go invisible. You can kill him very, very, very fast. He is so easy to kill, it's insane. So all you have to do is jump into this mission spam e you can use your second ability your radio blind to get the uh the stealth multiplier so you're going to deal damage with every single melee hit uh or extra damage with every single melee hit because he's going to be blinded uh you can do that there to speed up the kill but uh this guy is going to drop the uh part blueprints for mag so if you thought mag looked cool at the start of the game and you wanted to choose her as your starter, but you're following along with this guide, well, now you're going to be able to get her because she's one of the earliest frames that you can pick up, right? So if you want to, you can go ahead and you can farm up all of the part blueprints for mags, uh, or for mags, for mag. Remember, you've got to get the neuroptics, the systems, and the chassis. So go ahead and get all of those. Have them sitting in your foundry. Don't necessarily craft them all because mag isn't one of those frames that you want to be picking up early game. You can definitely use her early game, but the thing is, she's not as good as the likes of Excalibur or Rhino, for example, who we're going to be getting relatively soon anyway. So um, you can if you want to. It's not 110% necessary. You can skip out on farming up mag uh, for now if you want to, and then just move on with the rest of the guide. That's totally fine. But if we go ahead and we go back to Mars, we hover over the Ceres Junction again, we have to defeat Lich Krill at War on Mars. So just another boss. Uh, Lich Krill is a little bit more difficult to take down compared to the Sergeant on Phobos because he has um, basically an immunity phase, right? So this boss, he's got four pipes in his back, which you're going to have to burst by shooting at them. All you have to do is hold down left click while you're looking at these pipes. They're going to burst. And then you have to run up beside him and beat him to do like a hammer slam down attack. Whenever he does this hammer slam down attack, he's going to freeze himself. And you have to repeat that four times. And then he's going to set himself on fire. Then you can damage him. Again, it's a pretty straightforward boss. Once you get that immunity phase out of the way, all you have to do is shoot him once that's over. And... Uh, yeah, that's it. From this boss, you can farm Excalibur, but because we're already playing as Excalibur, it's not necessary to, of course, farm up all of the parts for him. So just once you do this here, boss once, move on to the next uh, junction requirement, which is defeat 300 R Grenier enemies on Mars. I might have mentioned this briefly in the P previous video, but all you want to do is jump into Augustus or something and then kill a bunch of enemies here. And then that's pretty much it. Augustus is your excavation. Excavation, you get a reward every single two minutes implying you're doing it right. So, you know, excavation missions are just great for getting a ton of endo credits, relics, etc. Um, but yeah, moving on from that. Refine a void relic once at the console in your orbiter. So I've actually already refined uh, this relic and I'll show the footage of me doing that on screen now. But all you want to do is come back to your little Void Relics console that is just to uh, the right of your arsenal and then go ahead, press X on it. And then you can use the Void Traces that you get from completing uh, the Void Fisher missions, which we've covered in a previous video. You can use those Void Traces to upgrade the quality of the Relic, right? So you can have a higher chance at getting a uh, rare item, right? So the one that I upgraded was a Lif M4 Relic. And uh, basically, it just gives me a higher chance to get the Mesa Prime Neuroptics Blueprint, a higher chance to get the Destreza Prime Blueprint, the Stratifar Prime Blueprint, and then a lower chance to get the Equinox Prime Chassis, Paras Prime Blueprint, and Akjagara Prime Blueprint. So it increases the chance for the rare stuff to drop, and decreases the chance for the common stuff to drop if that makes any sense so uh it's just like it's all about being able to play free avoid fisher mission and even if you don't get what you want at the end you're still going to get uh, a resource which allows you to increase your chances later on if that makes sense so um yeah it's just you know put something in get something out basically but um 
that is pretty straightforward. You know, that is all you have to do for um, Phobos to move into Ceres. Well, I guess it's a combination between Phobos and Mars. But if we go back to the star chart here and uh, you go back to Phobos, you can see that you can actually go to the Void now. Now, the Void, uh, this place, you're going to get a few resources that you need to craft a few things. So, for example, that uh, Power Core thing that I showed you guys earlier, you need Argon Crystals to um, craft that, right? Argon crystals are going to decay, so it's a resource that you can collect and then it's going to decay over time. I forget the lifespan of it off the top of my head, but just know that you're going to be able to view how long uh, your argon crystals are going to last for. I believe whenever the timer runs out that is in your foundry, you're going to lose half of the argon crystals you have. So if you have four argon crystals and the lifetime timer runs out for it, then you're only going to have two whenever you know it refreshes and starts to count down again. But um, yeah, this is the void. The void is home to the enemies that spawn in uh, whenever you're playing a void fisher mission, so those golden enemies. So it's a combination of all three factions, the infest the corpus the grenier and all that their stuff so it's a pretty challenging area on the star chart uh these three nodes that we have tesha pepit and taranus these are level 10 to 15 so it's not too difficult here uh playing through the void you're going to find a lot of different secret rooms and stuff like that and these secret rooms are going to have containers these containers are going to drop uh mods which you may not be able to farm up at this particular point in the game right so a mod that uh, a lot of people get from the void quite often is continuity continuity is a mod which increases the amount of time that your abilities last for, right? So power duration, essentially. And um, it's a pretty hard mod to farm up. So people take their chances going into the void to break containers and stuff in hopes of getting that mod. And they get it to drop from the void quite consistently rather than farming it from like a defense or something along those lines, right? So it's a rare mod, which you get more often from the void because of how random the void is compared to the uh, guaranteed uh, drop place because of the low drop chance that it has pretty much. So yeah, you can come in here, you can do these free nodes. You don't have to do them right now, but there is going to be a junction requirement later on down the line that requires you to do uh, one of these uh, nodes. I forget which one it is, but just... Do the free of these here. You don't have to do it right now, but at some point in time, do the free of these nodes and then go back to uh, go back to Phobos and then go to Ceres. Kill the guy that is on the Ceres Junction. The guy that is on the Ceres Junction, I believe, is Frost. Again, all you want to do is jump in here, press 2, and then spam me. It might actually be Trinity. Let's just go ahead and jump in. I think it is Trinity, you know because of the, the way that they changed up the star chart. Usually, the frame that is on the junction is going to be the one that you farm up next. But, yeah, so they, they changed it up, and Trinity is now on, like, you know, a completely different planet. So this is Trinity right here. I blinded her. I've got my Fragger equipped rather than my Scanner, so that took me a little bit longer to kill her than I would have liked if I had had my Scanner on. She would have died a lot faster. But um, yeah, that's Trinity. You're not going to be able to get Trinity from Ceres. You're going to be able to get Frost. So pardon me for that minor mistake that I made there. This is one of the new loading screens, which is quite fancy. But if we're back in here in the ship, we can move on to Ceres now, of course, because we killed that Trinity Spectre that was on the Ceres Junction. And over here on Ceres, what we have to do for the Jupiter Junction is to complete the Arcwing quest Devite 4 and Krill at Exta on series, uh, survive 10 minutes or more at Draco on series, and then defeat a Prosecutor on series. So the one that you're probably going to struggle with the most here is um, the defeating a Prosecutor. So the Prosecutor is basically a Guardsman, which is glowing, but he's not glowing similar to an Exibus. He's got a more vibrant glow and he's a lot more difficult to take down because he's kind of like reflecting everything you do as if he was from a star wars movie right so um you gotta hit him in the back if you want to deal maximum damage to him uh and he's gonna be pretty hard to make spawn in i consistently make him spawn in by playing rescue missions or playing what is known as invasions and perfect example right here if we take a look at series right now we can see that I've got uh, three nodes on here. So Exta, 
care and Kisti, which have uh, the fist icon on it, right? And basically, this indicates that there is an invasion active. And invasions are basically whenever two factions are fighting one another. And you can choose to side with one of the factions. So if we were to go ahead and click on um, Exta here. So it's an infested outbreak. So we can't side with the infested faction because, you know, they're not... We can't talk to them. They don't talk. They just kill. So if we click on infested outbreak, we can see that we can side with the Grenier to fight versus the uh, infested. Now, if it was Corpus versus Grenier, you could choose between the two of them, right? You could say, oh, I want to go to Corpus or, oh, I want to go with the Grenier. And you would make your decision based on the reward that they're offering, right? In this case, uh, they're offering one mutagen mass. But the thing is, you would have to do the mission three times to get uh, the mutagen mass that they're offering. And on top of that, before you get the reward, you've got to wait for the um, the invasion to run out, right? So there's going to be a percentage somewhere. Uh, there it is. So the status, 14.3%. I can't remember if you have to wait for it to hit zero or if you have to wait for it to hit 100. But you've got to wait for it to run out. And then you're going to get your reward in the inbox, implying you've done the free missions that you have to do right so it's a pretty cool system whenever there is an invasion active just do it uh this here one in particular this is a boss node extra so you're going to be playing against forward and forward drops the warframe next so if you get the series and you can see that uh forward is active on extra just go ahead and do it farm up nix a lot of people in the Warframe community, whenever you get to end game, they say that, well, I say end game. Whenever you get later on in the game, they say that Nyx is really bad. But at the start of the game, implying you can craft her early enough, she's actually really good because she provides some pretty good CC, right? Her third ability, uh, you press it once and then every single enemy is fighting one another. There is sometimes where the enemy still shoots at you uh, because digital extremes. But, uh, you know implying you're using it right and implying you're being smart about it and paying attention to what's going on in the game nix is a pretty good warframe for a beginning player uh, on top of that she also has an ability which lets you absorb a ton of damage and then let it out uh to all surrounding enemies so that there one is pretty cool as well especially if you struggle with uh your damage output and stuff like that so um nix can definitely be helpful and she might be right up your alley you might really enjoy her play style who knows so just pick her up uh farm up the neuroptics the chassis the systems if uh forward is active on here and then you'll be good to go but uh if he's not active you have to kill vor and uh lich krill here so two bosses that you've already killed so vor was the first boss that you killed uh that didn't drop a warframe part at all he dropped the seer on the uh the chronos so he's the guy that teleports and spawns in more enemies and has this annoying and vulnerable phase where he puts himself in the bubble and then lich krill is the guy that has the pipes on his back which we just killed back there on mars right so you just got to do this mission and this mission is going to drop frost you got to fight both of the bosses at the same time i recommend killing uh vor first and then going for lich krill uh maybe whenever vor is in his immunity stage maybe pop one of the pipes on lich krill's back and then you know just to speed it up a little bit uh definitely 110 percent farm frost frost is an amazing defensive warframe and he's gonna make missions where you have to defend things a cakewalk he's one of the best defense frames in the game so definitely pick him up uh he's also really good at cc as well he's got his fourth ability avalanche which just like freezes all of the enemies and deals a ton of damage to them it's great so definitely pick up frost 110 percent recommend them but going back to the other junction requirements we've got the quest complete the arcwing quest so that their quest is going to allow you to uh access this new well i say new game mode but it's going to be new to you but it's a game mode where you have these wings on your back which allows you to fly around space you're also going to be able to use your arc wing in the open world environment such as the planes of eidolon or the orvalis so it's worth picking up you need to pick it up to progress through the game but um arc wing on its own isn't that great Arcwing, whenever it complements to open worlds, is definitely a lot better. So don't expect too much from the game mode. It looks pretty at first, but it's actually really, really boring and really, really, really uh, repetitive. So it's cool at first, uh, cool at first glance, but later on the missions they don't really change up too much. And uh, 
you, you run into an issue where you're banging the walls a lot because there's a lot of like weird environmental design whenever it comes to the arc wing missions but yeah you got to pick up your arc wing the quest is pretty self-explanatory it's a bunch of excavation missions where you go when you do one excavator you get the part from it and then you need to craft the harness the systems and the chassis for it and then you put it together it takes an hour to put together then 30 mark 30 minutes for each part so if you start building all the parts at the same time 30 minutes and then an hour and then you can play the the final mission which is just like fly with your arc wing to the exit and then you're pretty much done and then that is the arc wing quest it's pretty straightforward it's pretty easy and then other than that all you have to do is survive 10 minutes or more at draco on seri so it's just a survival mission do 10 minutes it's pretty straightforward and then that is pretty much it for series again it's a very easy planet the most difficult thing that you're going to have to do is get that damn prosecutor to spawn. It's, again, one of those things that I wouldn't blame you if it made you quit the game because it is entirely RNG. It's entirely random. There's nothing you can do to sort of force them in. I would say do a mixture of mobile defense missions, do rescue missions, and do those invasion missions. Uh, that is implying that the invasion missions you're able to side with the corpus because you have to side with the corpus to be able to kill the grenier. If you're siding with the grenier, then you're not going to be able to kill the prosecutor even if he does spawn. So you've kind of wasted your time if you do that. So um, yeah, that is pretty much that. The last thing is this hijack mission right here. So this hijack mission is a mission where um, you have to walk beside this big thing, which is going to drain your shields over time. So you got to stay below it to make it move and enemies are going to sh be shooting at you. It's going to be annoying. It's going to take a while. I would recommend throwing on the mod redirection and then using that to sort of like cheese for this mission and then taking it off after you're done this mission because that's going to be the easiest way to go about you know just just getting through this right uh it's just one of those annoying missions that is very poorly placed i would much rather that they put this mission like where draco is and then put draco before the jupiter junction that way you know if this mission was too difficult for newer players like let's say they don't upgrade the redirection mod or something like that then you know they'll be able to progress through the game without having to worry about playing hijack missions ever because hijack missions only show up once in a blue moon they're just like kind of there to be annoying i guess you could say but um yeah other than that that is uh pretty much it whenever it comes to progressing through the star chart the only other thing that we can really talk about is the master rank that i'm at so if we go ahead we pause the game we can see i'm master rank four now i can show you my profile i can show you all the stuff that i've ranked up so i've got my artax fully ranked out so that is the weapon that goes on my what's it called the um the sentinel we've got the boltor which is the gun that i've been using mainly because again it's high in puncture damage so because it's high in puncture damage, it's going to do good versus those Grenier enemies. I've got my Excalibur in the max rank, Lado, MK1 Paris, Scanna, MK1 Kunai is level 29, my Taxon is level 29, Fragger is rank 10, MK1 Strun is rank 7. Because I've completed the Arkwing quest, I've got the Imperator, which is the Arkwing weapon, which is exclusive to uh, being used in the Arkwing. And then my Udinata, which is my Arkwing, uh, is rank 2. And then the Veritux is unranked. So I've got those. Those things are basically free master rank as well, and that's allowed me to get into that master rank four uh, area, right? Master rank four test is basically just jumping around on platforms to avoid infested enemies. You can literally just do that. You can kill them if you really want to, but just walk around those platforms. Uh, I'll have footage of me just jumping around on the platforms, uh, avoiding taking like any damage whatsoever. That's all you have to do. Wait for the timer to run out, and then you're good to go. So again, another very easy mash rank, uh, rank up thing quest, rank up quest, rank up quest. Um, so that there is all of that done and then the last thing we can really talk about is the mods that i have equipped so the one that you want to be paying attention to the most is probably your scanner so at this point in time i've got my pressure point maxed out i've got my fury which is rank free i've got a uh one rank fever strike and a one rank shock and touch 
This is going to car you free series because you have that corrosive damage on there. Those enemies that are on series are pretty much weak to corrosive damage. The heavy gunners that spawn on there, they're going to take 75% bonus damage because you have Crucive on. And then your Crucive procs, if you manage to proc them, because if your status chance, which um, I just accidentally unequipped that, that's going to reduce the enemy's armor by so much, right? So this build right here on your Scanna, this is going to make series a cakewalk. It's going to make it so easy. You're going to be like, wow. Like, if you don't use this build going in the series, it's going to be a little bit difficult. But if you use this going in the series, it's going to be a cakewalk. Same can be said for your rifle and your secondary. If you mod for the likes of heat damage or radiation damage, for example, then you're going to deal a lot more damage than you would be say you wouldn't have been using those specific elements. So if we take a look at my Boltor, let's see what I can run on my Boltor right now. So Stormbringer isn't the best bet. And I don't think I have, yeah, I don't have anything on here which will necessarily make my life easier. So what I would recommend using would be Cryo Rounds because it, your Boltor's got a D polarity on here. So you can throw your Cryo Rounds on and then you can throw on uh, other mods on top of it. So you can rank up your Speed Trigger, you can rank up your Serration and then get more damage out of your Boltor that way rather than using the likes of Stormbringer, which isn't going to like help you that much. It's going to stun enemies, of course, but... um. Realistically, it doesn't matter which one of these you use because they're not the best damage types going against the Grenier. Uh, cool damage is good versus the Bombards, but I don't think a lot of Bombards are going to be spawned in that series because the planet's level is way too low. So Bombards are basically Grenier enemies with rocket launchers. So this here is the build that I'm using on my Boltor and um, pretty straightforward. And then for my secondary weapon, I just haven't been using it. I've just been leveling. So I got my Lado the Max and then I jumped onto my Kunai and then I've been using that there over and over and over and over again. So yeah, you know, there's there's nothing there's nothing uh sort of special going on here. And then the last thing, I know I've said this is the last thing like three times now, is I can put a spreadsheet up on screen of more mods that you can get uh if you were to do the spy missions that are on Sari. So because we have progress through some of the planets the enemy's level has went up which means we're kind of in a new tier of planet right so the rewards that the missions on the planets are dropping have changed up right so we can get different uh mods from the spy mission now so i want you guys to know life the spy missions uh that are on series so there's only one i believe it's on a note called boot let me just go ahead and double check series yep boot so do this here spy mission and then just get all of the mods that I have on screen right now. There's one on here which is pretty important which is called Hell's Chamber. We're going to want to get that before we get a weapon called the Heck. If you've got the Master Rank 4, you can uh, go to the market, go to the top left hand corner, type in Heck and then pick this here up. Pick up the blueprint and then craft this here before you move on to the next episode. Because if you get that Hell's Chamber mod and you get this Hex Shotgun, it's going to make pretty much the rest of the game a cakewalk. Like, it really is. This gun, you're going to be using this up until the end of the game because it's just that good. Especially if you side it with the Steel Meridian Syndicate because there's another mod in there, which makes the game even easier. So, um... That's pretty much it for this episode of the Beginner Guide. This is, what, 28 minutes long or something like that? Uh, I can't believe I just, you know, rambled down the microphone about the game for almost half an hour. But yeah, guys, thank you for watching this episode of the Beginner Guide. Uh, if you liked it, go ahead and hit the like button below. If you disliked it, hit dislike. Uh, subscribe for more Warframe content, and I'll see you guys in the next one.